Hi, uh, Adriel is quite a bit shorter than me. Can I, can I adjust that? Is there, is there a way to make this tall? You know what? Screw it. Hi. Um, my name is uh, Rami Ismail. Uh, I am the guy that got a game about Cthulhu once while I was in a hospital on uh, painkillers and drugs, and suddenly there was a giant green monster on my screen. Uh, it was terrifying and awesome, and pretty much the most adorable thing I ever received. Um, it's uh, Cthulhu is my favorite tradition at this point, which I don't think a lot of people can say that. Um, I am uh, I'm also a game developer. I um, I made this game called Nuclear Throne. It uh, launched last week, um, and uh, I want to talk about. Oh wow! You know what? Let me switch one thing here because that's not how I like my setup. One second. Where are the buttons? I don't use a Mac. I don't know how this works. What are you trying to do? Not mirror. That's how you do it. I did it. <laughs> uh, there we go. I like knowing what slide is next. Um, anyway, so uh, I made a game called Nuclear Throne. This is a screenshot. Uh, there's a big laser. Uh, this is a screenshot. There's a big explosion. Uh, this is a screenshot. There is a chicken wielding a katana. And uh, this is a screenshot. There is more lasers, robots, ice, snow, fire, laser minigun. We have a laser minigun. Uh, why not? Um, anyway, I learned some things making this game. And they're all design-related things. And I really just kind of wanted to, to mention those. So it's kind of a design deep dive in the most shallow way because I only have 15 minutes. Um, but I want to talk about these three things. So um, the first one, we made a game, but we, we had like one issue with it when we first made it. Um, so, so you all understand this, right? So that's, that's north, <laughs> and that's east, and that's south and west. Mike Bibble there actually tricked me into believing I had east and west flipped around. <laughs> um, and I stared at it for like a full 20 seconds, I think, before I realized that it was not flipped, um, because that's what Mike does. <laughs> So uh, I, I want to play a really simple game. I'm going to show you some, some shapes. The green shape is the player. The orange shape are the enemies. And I'm going to show you eight different scenarios. And I want you to tell me from which quadrant the most threat comes. Okay? So there's going to be enemies and players. Okay? Let's try this. Let's go. So east. Perfect. So I'm not going to show you the slide for too long. Okay? Let's do it again. This one. It was east. We're at three. South. It was actually east and west. Equal amount. Let's try this one. Okay, let's, uh, let's try this one. Okay. How about this one? Okay. How about this one? How about this one? Okay, right, so um, here, here's what we've gone through. Um, if you, um, you just look carefully for a second here, there's something important here. So um, as you know, probably know, um, if you buy a computer screen nowadays, what aspect ratio does it have? 16 by 9. Now if you look very carefully at Nuclear Throne, it is not um, 16 by 9. It is uh, 4 by 3. Um, and there's, a, there's kind of a reason for that. And the reason I actually already showed you. Can anybody guess what the reason is? So it's balancing out the threat from more directions. If you go back here and you look, actually the left and right ones are the same screen. Only the thing I did is I removed any enemy that is outside the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Okay, so on the left, if it was 16 by 9, on the right, if it was 4 by 3. Everybody see that? So let's go through some screenshots. These are actually the screenshots I showed you uh, that you're looking at right now. That's, that's the threat map. Now, this is, uh, this is the resolution we have to work with. Uh, we, uh, we multi actually, the game is natively running in 320 by 240, 
not a lot of people know that, but the, if, you, if you would run the game on your screen, it would be about this big. Uh, and then we just blow it up until it fits the screen. Um, which uh, leaves those, uh, those ugly berries at the side. And a lot of people ask us, like, um, is that intentional? And it's actually kind of a, a weird question because it's really easier to just render shit to a screen. It's a lot harder to put sidebars over stuff you don't want to show that actually takes calculation and stuff. Like, it would have been much easier to be like 16 by 9, it's great. Um, but it didn't work. So these were your answers. Um, the first batch was east, east, west, east, south. The second batch was east, south, east, south. Now, that uh, comes out to this. And that comes out to this. Which is in batch A, the vertical threat assessment was 80%, and the horizontal one, uh, the vertical, yeah. Uh, wait, I flipped this around. Awesome. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, so I didn't sleep for 48 hours. We gave it all this. Um, shouldn't do that. Never crunch. Like, don't, don't be me. Terrible idea. Um, so flip those V and H around. This is like game development. You always notice that something is wrong after you submit the build. Um, but in the final batch, the second batch, where we made it 4 by 3 it's actually 50-50. Now that made us very, very happy. And it also makes us endlessly pissed off at the 4,000 threats in our forum that ask this. Um, because yes, of course it's designed, it's in the fucking game. Like, what do you expect? <laughs> that it's just accidental? We're just like, oh, you know, just put these bars over there and it's great. Uh, no, we designed that, of course we designed that. But, you know, good design is invisible. So, part two. So there's these pickups in the game, it's, it's these ones. And on the left, you've got an uh, ammo chest that gives you ammo. If you run out of ammo, grab one of those. And the second one is called a health chest. And then the third, uh, gives you, guess what? Uh, <laughs> You want to grab that if you're almost dying, uh, or if you are the chicken and you lost your head and you want to regrow a head. Uh, and then <laughs> the third one is a weapon chest, which gives you a... You're all brilliant. Um, but as you progress through the game, they might instead be this. Now, the left two ones bite and uh, kill you. Um, they do. And uh, it was awesome. People were so upset. Can you imagine? You're going through your run, and everything's going well, but you're just out of ammo, you've got two health, you're like halfway through the game, and you're like, let me just grab that ammo, I'm dead. <laughs> and then that thing just kind of like sits on your head, like really happily, like licking its, its like whatever it is that it's licking. Um, or even worse, the health mimic, because imagine you're almost out of health and you're like, there's, there's, there's my safe spot. If I just make it to that chest, just make it there. You step on it and you die. Uh, <laughs> it was awesome. But there was a problem because people adapted to it. Now every time, every single time they saw a chest, they would shoot at it. And they would shoot at every chest, even though those, those red ones don't have a mimic. There is no red mimic, but they shoot at every single chest. But we, we didn't like that. Because now nobody was angry. <laughs> Instead, everybody was shooting at chests. So that was not intentional. So JW, my, uh, my fellow Blamber, the other guy that founded the company with me, fixed it. How do you fix this? Blow it up. Sorry? Blow it up. Blow. Could be. Could, could be. That's cool. Kill the normal chest by shooting them, also fun. Take all the chests away. <laughs> <laughs> that would fix it. <laughs> if you could talk to the chest, a dialogue system, Mass Effect perhaps, could be interesting. Morality system, which chest did you prefer, Bioshock maybe? Um, no, he just made them much rarer. Now it's not one in every 20, it's one in every 100. And everybody forgets. After, <laughs> after 50 chests, you, f you forget that they might bite you. And then you die. <laughs> and we get angry emails. So good design can be counterintuitive. So part three, for part three I'm going to spoil the game for you. Um, so if you, if you do not want the game spoiled for you, um, look away or something. Um, more importantly, um, I couldn't get my laptop to work, but the build is on there. So um, if you can't see that screen, 
we're going to have to figure something out. Or you just have to get good enough at this game nice. that you can get here yourself. So uh, can somebody hand me that controller? Do you want me to hold your mic? That would be great. Yeah? Yeah, lovely. <laughs> Uh, but don't do it in front of the screen. That's sort of. Print smaller. She might fix. If it's some, wait, actually, I can I I can fix this. Uh, brilliant. And you know what? Even better. I can play this part pretty much blind. So this this is the final fight of Nuclear Throne. This is the very last thing you're going to come across. Uh, let me switch to the next slide, actually. Um, and what, what this does is for the last 70 hours, over and over again, you've died. You have died to a help mimic 100 times. You've died to the shittiest enemy in the game 100 times. You have trained and trained and you've been angry and you've been mad and you've been frustrated and you've been upset. And then finally... For the first time in the game, you come to a room that doesn't look like it was procedurally generated. This was, this was designed. And you stand there. This is where you are. And you can move and you can grab this. Oh, it's upside down. Wow. Uh, you grab the chest and now you're ready for the fight. And you start walking. And you're scared because nuclear throne, nuclear throne throws stuff at you. So you walk down and there's these weird pillars and you're like, okay, maybe this is like those chests. So you shoot them. Nothing happens. You're like, okay, okay. You walk forward. There's more. There's more. The game is building up to something. Now there's these giant things, and you can shoot them, but it does nothing. Nothing happens. So you press forward. And forward. And there it is. It is the nuclear throne. You try to walk up to it, but it doesn't work. You're like, why doesn't it work? So you do the only other thing that you can really do in Nuclear Throne, which is you shoot it, because that makes absolute sense. <laughs> and now you're standing there, and you're like, and now what? You still can't walk home to it. And the screen starts shaking, and then... <laughs> you die. You die of a giant laser beam. So after about 70 hours of play, <laughs> you made it perfect. You dodged every enemy, every bullet. You grabbed every right mutation. You did everything right. 70 hours of play has led to this. And then we make it personal. <laughs> because no, you're not good at this game. No, fuck you. You thought you beat us? No. Come back. Do it again. Do it again. Show us. I know what that is, and I only realized that later, it's personal. We made it personal. This is not us getting out of the way. You know, in normal design, the idea of design is to get out of the way. Get out of the way. Let the player play with the system. Let them engage with the system. Don't be in there. If the, if the player can see you as a designer, maybe you've messed up, unless they're really good at spotting design, right? But in Nuclear Throne, we put this moment in there. You know what the funnest part is? This is what we get emails about. <laughs> this is what we get really upset emails about. And you know the funnest part? They're not sent to our customer support email. No, they're sent to me. <laughs> they're sent to JW. They send them to us and they go, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you for this shit. And then a few days later we get an email that says, I beat it, fuck you again. <laughs> so, okay, good design is poor, so. I would love to have a good moral for this story. I would have to love to have like an overarching thesis, uh, a point that I would make. But honestly, the moral of the story is that nobody really knows what the fuck good design is. And it can <laughs> kind of be anything. Uh, but those, two, those three things work for me. Thank you. Mm -hmm.